Yes, I've been looking forward to this one. We're going to talk about my number one Excel VBA technique. This technique on its own is so powerful, but it combines beautifully with other Excel VBA techniques, things like loops and variables to create magic in Excel VBA and give us those punch the air moments. Yes, we love those. Have you enjoyed any punch the air moments on the Excel VBA building blocks course? You can go ahead. The link is in the video description. Head over to the website, get the course handbook. There's also some learning template templates, secret videos, download files. It's all over there. The download link is in the video description. So firstly, as always, let's deal with the concept and people who've been around for a while on the channel know that I love a bit of chess. We're going to talk about the night today, the night today in chess. How does the night move on the chessboard? We've got the chessboard here too. Let's get it going. So say the night starts in this square, starts in this square here. So there's a starting point. This is our concept. We've got a starting point or an anchor point. Then we're going to move away from that anchor point for the night, two squares down, one, two, and then one square across. It's going to get us to this square. So we've got the concepts of a starting point, an anchor point, moving down a number of squares or a number of rows, and then moving across a number of columns. And in chess, it's all about controlling this grid. It's actually the same in Excel. Have you ever thought about it that way? It's all about position control, knowing where we are on this grid. With that said, let's get into the download files and what is this technique all about? I've got the VBA editor here, I've got the Excel file here. Firstly, I'm just going to clean out some of the data just to give us a clean uh, sheet to work with. What are we aiming to do with this technique? Well, we're going to be talking about lists of numbers here. I'm going to go for six numbers, but this te technique is so powerful. You could, you could go for 60 or 600 numbers however many numbers you want. So we're going to aim for a list of numbers. How do we get there? Well, we're going to have a new macro. I'm going to say sub offset test, offset test. Yes, the offset method in Excel VBA. As with many things, it isn't particularly helpfully named. So you can think of offset as move away from taking a starting point, moving away a number of rows, moving across a number of columns. Let's try to understand it with a simple example. So you can take any cell on the sheet. I'm going to say D4, any cell that you can see. That's going to be our anchor point or our starting point. And then we're going to use offset to move away from that point, a number of rows and a number of columns, and then to change the value of the cell that we arrive at. In English, that's what we're doing here now. Why did I put two and one here? Well, two and one is going to replicate the movement of our humble knight, of course, because with offset, the first number moves us a number of rows down. And if it's positive, it's going to move down. If that number is negative, it's going to move up. Then the second value is going to move us a number of columns across. If that number is positive, it's going to move us to the right. If it's negative, it's going to move us to the left. So stop the video now. Let's have a good look at this code. Stop the video. Where is here going to appear in this spreadsheet? So we're going to start at D4. The first value is two. We're going to move two rows down and then one column across. So my prediction is that we're going to end up in E6, starting at D4, what, two rows down, one column across E6. So I'm going to play the code now. And then what happens? And I can see the code appears here. So now what do we need to do? It's so important to go ahead and play. We can change the values that work with the offset method very easily. We can change the uh, anchor point very easily. For example, where's this going to appear? Again, stop the video, hit the play button, and we can see that's how easy it is to use the offset method. So hopefully you've understood the basic example. Take the time, guys. Take the time now to play, really consolidate that understanding because there's a steep climb in the difficulty of this video. Now, I mentioned at the start, what I love about offset is it brings things together. It's a great facilitator we're going to see how offset can work with a variable and a loop to create what we're looking for, which is a list of numbers. So firstly, let's declare a variable, an integer variable. So I'm going to say dim counter as integer. And then 
we're going to put a loop together. Now, what's this loop? Well, you might be able to see here for next loop and you might be thinking, well, Chris, in the Excel VBA building block series, we haven't done a for next loop. Oh, yes, we have. We have. It's over in the secret videos on the website. The link is in the video description. How does a for next loop work? Well, I'm going to say for counter equals one, two, six, and then next counter at the bottom. So let's just notice the important features of the syntax here. It's a bit like a for each loop. You know, you've got for and next, but with for each, we're looping through a sheet, a cell, open workbooks. We're using an object to make the loop work. The difficult thing and the different thing about a for next loop is we use a variable. We use a variable to make the loop work. It's kind of abstract and difficult to get your head around, but you'll see in this video, it is so powerful. I've named the variable counter because that's what the variable does. It counts as we're going to see in just a second. So we always give our variables informative names. So what's going to happen here? Well, let's just go ahead. Let's simplify a little bit. We're aiming for a list of numbers. I'm going to try to build a list of numbers from D4. So I'm going to start with D4. I'm just going to reset our offset numbers here. Let's do something simple. Let's work through it nice and relaxed, step by step. There's no need to try to do it in one go. In fact, your learning is going to benefit by working through it step by step. So what's going to happen here? I'm going to go ahead, play the code, and we can see we've just got here appearing in D4. But there's actually much more happening. Let's go ahead and illustrate that here. I'm going to step through the code using the F8 key, hitting F8 on the Windows PC. You can also go to debug, debug and stepping into and debugging code is one of our Excel VBA meta skills. And you can see, yeah, the value appears there, but the value is actually being overwritten a number of times. So what's happening? Well, because of the way we've set up the for next loop, we're iterating through the loop six times. So just take the cursor now and hover it over counter and just observe the value of the variable. It's currently four. Every time we go through the loop, that value is incrementing up by a value of one. This is the power of the for next loop. So counter now equals six. So every time we're going through this loop, the value of counter is going up by one. Hmm. Might that help us in some way? Stop the video. How might you incorporate counter into this line of code? Seriously, stop the video. Do this hard conceptual thinking yourself. It's so important for your VBA learning. I'm saying we can do something. We can do something to this line of code that's going to get us very close to having a list of numbers. And just note, I changed D4 to D3. So our starting point is now going to be cell D3. What can we bring in to work with offset to get us towards a list of numbers? And if you got this, you are doing so well on the Excel VBA building blocks course. We can substitute in the variable. Yes, we've got the variable now working with offset. That's interesting because every time we go through the loop, what happens? The variable increments up by a value of one. What's going to happen now? I'm going to hit the F8 key on the Windows PC, and we're going to see our here's are suddenly stacking up in a list. How about that? When I first saw this, when I was studying Excel VBA for the first time, this was just mind blowing for me. I love sharing this with people. What's happening? Well, the value of the variable increments up by one that works with offset to move down a row each time we work through the loop. So we've managed to get our list. We're making progress, but it's not a list of numbers, isn't it? Is it? So what's the final thing that we can do to give us a list of numbers? I'm going to go ahead, holding down the shift key, using the down arrows, just hit the delete key to clear out that data. Hmm. What's the final thing we need to do here? And I said offset brings together so many powerful things in VBA. Let's take a second to observe those. We've got a variable. We've got our integer variable here working with offset and working with a loop. These three you'll see working in combination all the time in powerful Excel VBA routines, a variable, a loop and position control using offset. But did you see what I did there? I just substituted the variable name 
the variable name and now the variable value should appear when we work through the loop. So hitting the F8 key now and we can see the values appearing there creating that list. That's the power of the variable combining with offset, combining with the loop. Now have some fun. Make sure you have some fun. What if we did 1 to 26 here? Now I'm going to stop the code, click in the routine, play it again. Suddenly we've got a list of 26 variables. What if I were to do something, 26 values rather, what if I were to do something like this? What's going to happen now? Stop the video, hit play. We can see we've got this diagonal arrangement of numbers. So why is that happening? Don't deny yourself the play. You have earned this. Hopefully you've had a punch the air moment. Let me know in the comments how you get on. Remember guys, you can go ahead, download the PDF, download the additional videos, download the download files. I hope you're making progress with the XL VBA Building Block series. The next video to watch is in the pinned comment below this video. I'll see you there.